afternoon sir we are waiting for dr reddy to join i don't find myself on the screen yes yeah now i can see dr reddy also here yeah uh, <laughs> i've been there only you didn't switch on my video oh, okay 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 oh, welcome oh. sir welcome. Uh, nirmalya my parana uh, mai namaskar yes sir you are visible you are visible to us okay yeah. wonderful and um, so uh, we, we were together in uh, one committee for nalsep uh, maybe in 2014 or 13 if i am right yes you are talking you are mentioning about me yeah i am mentioning yeah about very much so doctor digal uh, yeah, uh, yeah I, i very much remember yes so it's uh, very nice of you to have agreed uh, for this and uh, joining us my pleasure uh, sir my yeah, pleasure sir i am sure it would be very much appreciated you know by the general public wonderful thank you thank you sir so shall we start then yeah yeah no i think so good up you have another two three minutes i think better wait now uh yeah <laughs> बैकग्राउंड का स्क्रीन कुछ लगा है इधर के निकाल के ये वर्कशॉप को बोला कि सब कटर्स निकालने के बताइए कुछ करना है निर्मल सर वेरी माय माय डोंट सी माय पिक्चर एनीवे सर एक्चुअली देयर इज अ स्क्रीन शेयर फ्रॉम ओके डीआरडीओ साइड दैट्स व्हाई ओके बट एज लॉन्ग एज आई वी आर एबल टू सी यू सर या वी आर एबल टू सी वंडरफुल ग्रेट आई डोंट हैव टू सी माय ओन फेस <laughs> so it's exactly two o'clock. So we'll start now. Yeah, so good afternoon, distinguished guests. Uh, my name is Nirmalya Bakshi. I'm the Director General of Administrative Staff College of India. Uh, i first of all welcome <coughs> dr satish reddy garu secretary department of defense r&d and chairman drdo i welcome our chairman as ki court of governors <coughs> shri k padmana bhaiya former home secretary of the country i welcome all the distinguished guests who have gathered here <coughs> for this public lecture the students my aski colleagues friends from the academia friends from the scientific community civil society and most importantly the media a uh, few ground rules before we start in spite of the several redundancies there may be link failures and so so <coughs> the link remains the same if you get uh, shut out then or is there is a, if there is a link failure please do uh, join back again uh, and <coughs> dr reddy has very kindly agreed that he will take a few questions after the after his talk so <coughs> those questions can be typed in the chat box and i will be moderating and i will be throwing those questions to dr reddy after his talk well friends in the last 7 8 years the country has had tremendous progress in <coughs> indigenizing our defense equipment from a situation where india was one of the top 3 importers of defense hardware we now have our own light combat aircraft our own light attack helicopter most of the naval ships are designed by us in missiles we are more or less self sufficient we even have capability of anti satellite missiles and i know personally uh, dr reddy has been personally involved in developing many of those capabilities which india has under his help it has been developed and also when he was a scientist developing seekers and other such <coughs> equipment uh, the recent good development that has come about in the sense that <coughs> philippines uh, has become the first uh, Uh, importer of a very critical defense equipment brahmos missile uh, goes to show that the international community is warming up to our defense hardware and probably this is the first step towards accelerating defense <coughs> production in the country and also exporting them so very soon perhaps in the next 5 6 years and we would like to hear that from dr reddy we will probably be net exporter of defense hardware well having said that 
let me introduce uh, dr reddy formally to you uh, of course he needs no introduction but even then uh, dr g satish reddy is the secretary defense uh, department of defense r and d and chairman of drdo he is also director general of aeronautical development agency he graduated in electronics and communication engineering from j from from jntu anantapur uh, and received his ms and phd from jntu hyderabad uh, <clears throat> he was elevated to distinguished scientist in 2014 and was appointed as scientific advisor to defense minister in 2015 and thereafter as secretary department of defense r and d and chairman drdo in august 2018 there have been many many critical systems which have been developed by <coughs> dr reddy when he was at the helm of affairs as director rci here in hyderabad as also in his tutelage as uh, chairman drdo and, and secretary ddrd uh, critical to those are rf seekers in which no other country would have given those kind of seekers to us we developed it ourselves and <coughs> dr reddy's lab had a great role to play under his stewardship the country launched the capability of asat which is anti satellite missile which is which only a few countries top countries in the world has and there have been a plethora of missiles which have been developed under his uh, guidance uh, bvr sam uh, mr sam lr sam qr sam astra astra 2 and i could go on and on about his accomplishments in developing Uh, these defense hardware but one thing i would like to highlight here and he has done the country proud he is the first indian in over 100 years to be conferred the honorary fellowship and the silver medal by the royal aeronautical agency society london uh, and his, he has been uh, here that, that, that has been recognition recognition of his contribution towards indigenous design development and deployment of diversified missile systems aerospace vehicles guided weapons and avionics technologies of the country apart from that he has won numerous awards including american institute of aeronautical and Aeron aeronautics missile systems award uh, <coughs> aeronautical prize national systems gold medal national Dis systems design award ieee award for engineering excellence and the homi j bhaba gold medal Uh, that's a little bit about dr reddy but before we proceed and request him to deliver his uh, public lecture uh, i request now our chairman uh, shri k padmana bhaiya to give his opening remarks after his opening remarks i will request dr satish reddy for his public lecture sir over to you sir yeah good afternoon uh, dr satish reddy uh, a very very warm welcome to you good afternoon nirmalya uh, and good afternoon to all the participants distinguished participants it's a matter of pleasure for us because for the last 4 years we have been organizing in aski what is called the public lecture series this is just to you know uh, get some of the top people in the country and let them speak to the public through our platform uh, of the their achievements and all that and uh, some of the top people in the country have addressed this meeting and i'm very glad that dr satish reddy has agreed to uh, join us well as uh, i would uh, join my colleague uh, nirmalya in welcoming a very very distinguished scientist uh, dr uh, reddy not only he is a distinguished scientist but he is a very distinguished science manager now talking about drdo uh you know there is some amount of uh, uh, goodwill between aski and uh, uh, drdo aski was set up in 1956 drdo was set up in 1958 there is only a difference of 2 years between our uh, <laughs> ages you know and uh, drdo is a very formidable organization with about uh, 11500 crores of budget or whatever it is whereas ours is a very small niche organization looking into improving the management techniques and then administrative skills of personnel in the government and in the public sector uh sometimes i wonder how dr reddy or any other person is able to manage or run this huge organization 
called DRDO, which uh, has about more than 70 or 80 projects and then 40 academic institutions, 15 natural science and technology, uh, national science and technology agencies, uh, 50 public sector undertakings, about 40 ordnance factories, and over 250 public sector industries. With all this, he interacts with those things. And uh, he employs about 5,000 uh, scientists and about 25,000 uh, scientific personnel and other personnel to support his, uh, this one. Sometimes with his uh, myriad responsibilities as the head of the DRPO, I wonder how he runs the organization at all. So I wish you would tell us also something about that. Uh, not only talk about, uh, you know, India's steps to find self-sufficiency. Uh, I retired in 1997. I joined the service in uh, uh, 1960. In those days, DRDO, nobody was taking DRDO seriously. In fact, there used to be endemic delays and then all the three wings of the defense forces used to criticize them in a way and all that, but things have changed tremendously. But coming to, thanks to people like leaders like uh, Dr. Satish Reddy. Uh, coming to the topic uh, today, uh, even today, what happens is India's self-reliance in the defense systems covers around 30 to 35 percent, in spite of various steps taken by the government. And uh, after the breakup of the Soviet Union, because before that, they were the main suppliers of uh, defense equipment to us, a 10-year plan for self-reliance in the defense systems was prepared, covering the period 1995 to 2005. And the target was in those 10 years, that is by 2005, we should be at least 70% self-sufficient in our defense systems. Well, we couldn't reach the target. The target has been postponed. And now the target is uh, to reach 70%. It is 2027. That is another five years. Now, I would like to, uh, Dr. Reddy, to uh, sort of reminisce on, on this and then tell us whether this is possible or not. Government have taken two very important steps uh, in the few years, last few years. One is opening up of the military industrial complex to Indian private sector, 100% to the Indian uh, private sector. And two, the opening of the FDA. First, it was increased to 26%, then to 49% in 2014, and now to 100%. So, uh, and then Prime Minister's program of Make in India, uh, and then Atman Nirbhar, um, that is what the topic of the day is. I hope we should be able to achieve these things, provided organizations like DRDO can deliver these things. But one thing I just wanted to mention, uh, make in India should not be assembled in India. Before we make in India, I think the first focus has to be discovered in India, followed by invent in India. And I think, um, is this possible because we are still spending only about 1% of our GDP on the research and development. And, but uh, leaders like uh, Dr. Satish Reddy have taken many initiatives. For example, in the DRDO, there's a transfer of technology uh, unit, which transfers the technology to various organizations. In fact, I was going through their website. It runs into five, six pages, you know, the number of organizations to which uh, transfer of technology has been made. Then it uh, operates a technology development fund and uh, where the private sector is supported by grants uh, to do these things. Now, he has been using the pool of retired scientific scientists from the DRDO. He has created an organization for that. I think that's a, a great move. And similarly, he has been a sort of marshalling the students, student community, the young scientists, you know, who have not part of the DRDO, but he is giving a lot of focus to them. And with these steps, I think uh, we should be able to uh, sort of achieve the targets. Now, without uh, much ado, uh, I would request uh, Dr. Satish Reddy uh, to deliver his lecture. Thank you. <clears throat> Thank you, sir. Uh, very good afternoon and namaskar to everyone. Sri uh, K. Padmanabhaya, former Home Secretary, Government of India, now Chairman, Court of Governors, Administrative Staff College of India, 
Professor Nirmalaya Bhatji, the Director General Aski, and all others who are present uh, for this public lecture. Uh, namaskar to everyone and very good afternoon to you. At the outset, let me thank uh, uh, Professor Nirmalaya Bhatji and uh, Sri Padmanabhaya Garu for uh, giving me an opportunity to give my thoughts and also interact with you uh, later part of uh, today's talk. Uh, it's, it's a privilege for me to be among us you here today giving this talk. Um, coming to the journey of defense technologies in the country, I think uh, uh, Padmana Vegaru has given a overall picture how the journey has been, what it was, and where we have come, and what is the way forward for us. It's a, a bird's eye view of the whole uh, journey and the way forward. As uh, mentioned, the Defense Research and Development Organization started in the year 1958, two years younger to ASCII, and uh, went ahead with this journey as uh, test and development agency and things like that and certification agencies and all and then doing research and later into the system development and then into mega systems development probably i think the major uh, change has come or uh, the quantum jump has come in the 80s where drdo took up major systems for its development that is the time uh, actually dr kalam has become the director of uh, Defense Research and Development Laboratory in Hyderabad and took up the uh, major program of development of five missiles, uh, the Prudhvi, Agni, Akash, Trishul, and Nag, under a program called Integrated Guided Missiles Development Program. And uh, same during the late 80s, the initiation of light combat aircraft program or the main battle tank Arjun program gave a, a total change in the outlook of the defense uh, research and development organization, the systems development, working more closely with armed forces and trying to develop the systems what they want and delivering the systems and art. So that's how the journey has been. And uh, uh, when you uh, look at today, the present scenario, uh, I just go through uh, the aspirations of the nation. Today, as been mentioned by both uh, uh, Professor Nirmalaya and then uh, uh, Padmanabe Garu, basically country looks at completely self-reliant and secure nation, and then the country, instead of importing, we should export. This is how the nation looks at. And when you look at the scientific and technological aspirations, we should be developing the advanced technologies. We should be having a continuously innovating nation and then vibrant, uh, uh, synergetic ecosystem. And uh, we should be leading the world in the technologies than being a technology follower, which we have been. So this is what uh, uh, the outlook is. When you look at the development, uh, various things come into the picture, whether academic institutes or the test facilities, infrastructure, and support system and ecosystem and all that. Whereas when you deliver to the uh, product to the armed forces, you should be meeting all the extreme environmental requirements, whether it is uh, talk about the desert in the western border, uh, talk about the extreme cold weather in the northeastern border and all that, and then ease of operation, maintenance, production, upgradation of the product and support system and all that is one of the important things. There's a clear uh, difference when you develop a system, it's working in a laboratory is different and when you give it to the armed forces to work in those conditions reliably is the most important thing. That's how it should be. When you look at the areas of work, I don't think uh, we need to get into the details of it, but everything what is connected, uh, you need to work. So it, uh, it goes into the field of complete electronics. You talk about materials, you talk about naval sensors, you talk about aeronautics, you talk about uh, life sciences. So the whole subject, I see right from food technologies onwards, uh, clothing technologies onwards and things like that onwards, goes into ammunition, explosives and related areas and all that. 
any any country when it is working on defense technologies you need to work on all the, all those areas that is one of the important thing so when you look at uh, resistant items it will be uh, all those areas what we are looking at so going by one by one a lot of developments have happened in the particularly in the last about 3 uh, to 4 decades many systems have been developed and uh, we have become uh, confident and self reliant in many of the areas one of that areas is missiles a lot of missiles which have been developed whether it is surface to surface missiles or uh, talking about surface to air missiles or talking about cruise missiles or air to air missiles or anti tank missiles and things like that if you look at the surface to air missile the one of the most important uh, missile which has been developed is akash akash missile has been uh, developed it has been inducted into the services by the armed forces in a big way and uh, i think uh, if i am right the bdl has got an order order close to over 30000 crores worth of order for the akash missile system which it has uh, developed and produced and then uh, later a little longer range medium range surface to air missile which has been developed again which has been also getting inducted into all the three services and then there is a quick reaction surface to air missile which is again a surface to air missile best battlefield vehicle which moving with army has also been developed and uh, when you look at uh, the air launch and missiles the uh you have again number of missiles you have uh, ngrm and then you have radram series of missiles your brahmos missile and then a short range anti ship missile is uh, one of the air launch uh, missiles and then when you look at the our uh, cruise missiles the nirbhay is another cruise missile along with brahmos which is a supersonic uh, cruise missile there is nirbhay is a subsonic cruise missile and then uh, we have the uh, multi barrel rocket system which is uh, pinaka and which pinaka has been again made as a guided pinaka making it go into the longer range of uh, more than 75 kilometers this is another important uh, missile system which has been developed and then uh, you have air to air missile system which is a very important missile system which has been developed astra mark 1 which actually can engage targets at a longer range release from an aircraft which is inducted into the services and it is in the process of being developing the longer range astra mark 2 and mark 3 systems also and all the aircraft will be having all these missiles in the coming uh, years then when you look at the anti tank missiles the one which has been now uh, conceived long back the nag has gone through all the successful trials in getting inducted into the armed forces similarly helicopter launched uh, anti tank missile helena is also getting through and uh, all the trials and it is going to be inducted very soon then there is a stand off anti tank missile for a longer range launched from again from a helicopter this is also recently gone through successful trials then we have uh, man portable atgm which is in the advanced stages of development and the atgm far from the fire from the barrel of the arjun is also under the uh, trials which is going through should be able to get it to inducted into the uh, uh, service soon brahmos i don't have to mention uh, it's a supersonic cruise missile it was the dream of the tatalam when we were actually firing uh, test firing prithvi agni and all that we were becoming one of the six nations seven nations in the world dr kalam used to say when are we going to become the first nation that is how we worked jointly with russia to develop a supersonic cruise missile where the entire electronic is from indian side avionics and everything and other thing motor engine is coming from uh, uh, russia this has been a, a true joint venture and it was the only supersonic cruise missile in the world at that time so that is the dream what dr kalam had which was made into reality and the system was developed now it is uh, uh, inducted into all the three services and just today morning we had one more uh, very successful flight testing of the brahmos today with uh, updated uh, uh, systems modern systems and modern control systems and updated uh, new trajectory which has been incorporated it has been just today morning it has been successfully flight tested and uh, we are one of the very few nations uh, four nations or five nations who have developed the ballistic missile defense program 
and uh, wherein successfully have intercepted the incoming ballistic missiles. Successful trials have been conducted. Any enemy's ballistic missile in the midair at higher altitudes, it can be neutralized. This system has been developed. We are one of the very few nations in the world. And uh, this uh, has already been uh, mentioned by Mr. Nirmalia that we are one of the four nations who have actually neutralized a satellite in the orbit. Uh, we actually became the fourth nation, the US, the Russia, and China, and India is the fourth nation who have actually directly hit a tar target satellite and neutralized the circuit and ensuring that there are minimum debris. We became as a, we are a responsible nation ensure that there are minimum debris in the space uh, when the test is done and we became the fourth nation. This is actually Honorable Prime Minister who has actually given us the task. We should show to the world our uh, technological capabilities and that's how he has given the task to DRDO saying that you should do it in two years. We are very thankful to Honorable Prime Minister for giving such a mega task to us and making the nation proud of the successful launch. Uh, you all must have been hearing the word that uh, hypersonic missiles have been developed by the most advanced nations in the world. And we are also one among them who are driving. And uh, you know that uh, about uh, one year plus back, we have also done a test of hypersonic uh, uh, system with the scramjet engine being operated. And we are going ahead and we're moving ahead in developing many technologies in this which are required, the engine technologies, the material technologies, and whatnot and all that. I mentioned some time back, main battle tank Arjun. We are one of the six nations in the world who have developed their own main battle tank, which has been, uh, the Mark I has been handed over to Armed Forces long back, and then the Mark I-A. Honorable Prime Minister Sri Narendra Modi ji has handed over last year, January, this to the chief of army staff and which again 118 numbers are being uh, uh, ordered from the artness factories which ensures that one of the most very comfortable and uh, mighty uh, arjun tank is a part of the armed forces of india and uh, when you look at the guns this is one technology which actually was alluding us earlier but then we could develop our own gun now. This is the first gun what you are seeing is, is attacks, advanced towed artillery, artillery gun system attacks and 155 artillery gun. Today, I can very proudly say that this is the world's longest range gun. This even declared by Honorable Prime Minister, India has the gun which has the longest range. And this will be the final trials are getting uh, done now and soon it will be inducted. Then a lot of armored platforms have been developed. In fact, this uh, wheeled armored platform has been inducted into the CAPFs also, uh, Central Armored Police Force. And they also have taken not only armed forces, and this is in uh, multiple use. This is one of the most important systems which India has developed, light combat aircraft stages. The Mark I, 43 numbers are in the process of uh, getting its production completed. Induction is going on. And the Indian Air Force has given for Mark 1A with additional features, 83 numbers. The single largest ever order from Indian Air Force for such large numbers. And this is being produced by Hindustan Aeronautics Limited, designed by the Aeronautical Development Agency of Defense R&D, DDR&D, and DRDO together. And has to pave the way for India to develop many more systems to come in. And India is developing now LCM Mark II, the advanced medium combat aircraft, which is the fifth generation of fighter aircraft, which again, uh, one or two nations only have uh, made the fifth generation of fighter aircraft, which India has taken up and is working on that and built the confidence in the aeronautic sector of the country, where industries have come up in a big way, making the system which can be developed very fast. Same thing you can see here, LCM Navy landing on uh, aircraft carrier, and uh, this is one of the important feats which India has successfully demonstrated and paved the way for uh, development of a complete aircraft for the naval requirements operating from the aircraft carrier. And so the basic technologies of all this LCA Navy have been completely proven through LCA. Uh, again, coming to electronic warfare systems, this is the AWC, 
aircrafts which have been developed by uh, DRDO and handed over to Indian Air Force with all the most modern features. I don't want to get into too many technical details, but this is one of the system continuous, indigenously, completely indigenously developed here on an Embraer aircraft and then uh, delivered to the Indian Air Force. Now coming to unmanned systems, again this area, a lot of things have happened uh, right from uh, almost uh, two, two, point, uh, two, two and a half decades onwards, many unmanned systems as targets for the uh, successful testing of the SAMs and all that have been developed. The Rustum 2 is the male EAV, that medium altitude long endurance EAV, which is in its advanced stages of uh, test. I'm sure by next month, you should be able to complete all its trials, uh, meeting the requirement of the armed forces. And then a lot of UAVs, a lot of small small things have been developed and many things. And particularly today in the drone sector, the Indian private industry and startups are doing wonderful job. Lots of companies have come which are uh, developing lots of drones for varieties of applications, including the security requirements and also the defense requirements of the country. This is one more area where uh, the country is very strong today, radars. Country has developed multiple radars. Let me tell you today, there are 1800 radars indigenously developed which are there with the armed forces today. And you talk about the land-based, ship-based, or airborne, Varieties of radars have been developed. The complete technology is know-how is available. And I can say that we are very strong and capable of developing of any type of a radar, what is required for the nation. Uh, that is the state where, along with all the technologies. And then torpedoes is another thing, where uh, the laboratory at Vishakapatnam NSTL is uh, developing the torpedoes. It has already developed multiple torpedoes, which have been inducted into the Indian Navy. And some more are being developed along with that. Uh, the torpedo defeating systems also have been developed by the same laboratory. And the same laboratory is also working on unmanned underwater vehicles also now today. And then coming to the sonars, this is one of the important science and technology subject, which India has actually developed a lot of technologies in this, and a lot of work has gone in. And any submarine is available is of India is fitted with the sonars what are developed in the country and the ships also. So there's one technology which again we have developed a lot and then uh, we are able to go ahead. And then the new areas of artificial intelligence, a lot of work is going on. In fact, to the DRDO's endeavor is that all the systems which will come out now onwards will have AI, artificial intelligence, built into it. That's how every laboratory is working in this direction. Then uh, cyberspace is another important area where lots of things are being done, which is we cannot be ignorant about cyber related aspects today. And so we need to have our own secure solutions. So a lot of things I don't want to get into here, right from hardware to software to operating systems and all that are being developed or developed and which are being in use, making the country safe with respect to the cyber attacks. And then honorable prime minister, uh, has given direction to DRDO that uh, you create young scientist laboratories where all the scientists in that laboratory are below the age of 35 years. So we have created five young scientist laboratories which are working on most advanced areas, artificial intelligence, asymmetric warfare technology, the cognitive technologies, smart materials, and the quantum technology. So there are five laboratories, all the young scientists below age of 35 are working on this and uh, working on the most advanced technologies today. And uh, when you look at the connection to the ecosystem, see, no organization can work in silos. Organization has to continuously work with the ecosystem. What is the ecosystem? Ecosystem one is academic institutes where the basic research happens and some extent of applied research. And then you have to work with other R&D organizations in the country, like CSIR, DST, or ISRO, or Atomic Energy, and things like that. And then you have to work with the industry. Uh, these are the main elements where you need to work. And then only you'll get a synergy, and you'll be able to produce the systems what uh, country needs. So it has, DRDO has been working in a big way with all these things. So when you look at uh, 
industry. I'll be getting into the details of uh, this one, how in each area you'll be working. But coming to academic institutes, firstly, there are 10 centers of excellences which have been established in various academic institutes in the country today to work on varieties of advanced and futuristic technologies. We talk about IIT Mumbai, IIT Chennai, IIT uh, Delhi, then you have in Jadavpur University, you have in Mijaram University, you have in Hyderabad Central University, you have in Bhartiyar University, you have in Gujarat University, and you have in Jambu University. These are the places where the centers have been ex uh, established to work on this. The various professors and research associates working on the problems and issues related to the futuristic technologies and trying to develop many, many uh, advanced technologies and systems in these centers. And uh, over and above that, we also have lots of schemes to work with academic institutes. Today, DRDO is working with more than 300 academic institutes, from small projects to big projects working on many technologies. There are research boards, uh, like the Naval Science Research Board, Material Science Research Board, Aeronautics Board, and uh, uh, Life Sciences Board, which again give work where actually the these boards are led by the academicians. And a lot of research projects happen. With these 300 academic institutes, the budget for the academic institutes from the year is about 1,000 crores. 1,000 crores of projects are running with the academic institutes today on various problem areas. This is one thing. At the same time, you need to develop a lot of skill set also. That skill set you need to develop in the uh, students in the defense technologies. That's how this year we have introduced YMTech program in academic institutes. And uh, with AICTE's uh, clearance, there are more than about 40 academic institutes in the country have started MTech programs in the defense technologies in the six mainstreams which are given. So there are lots of people, MTech students in the defense technologies will be produced, will be available for DRDO, will be available for DPSUs and also industry. And then even the BTEC also, there have been elective courses which have been introduced. And uh, as Padmana Vaigaru said, the retired scientists of DRDO through a society, we have engaged these uh, retired scientists to actually to teach on these subjects also. So that is one of the important areas. And then second is most important is we have also brought in technology uh, development uh, program, which actually uh, supports the industries in a big way and trying to work with uh, academic institutes in the country, academy working with the industry in the country and uh, uh, various uh, uh, industries also in the country. And uh, this is one of the important things which has actually been brought in and uh, trying to work with uh, various uh, uh, industries and trying to fund them in a big way. Each industry will be funded with uh, 10 crore rupees for the R&D project what has been taken. So there are already about 40 projects, 40 industries have been awarded these uh, projects and the sanction. They're all working on various problems. This is to promote the uh, R&D culture in the industries, this program has been started and the response is fantastic. There are more than about 85 are in pipeline. So that means another six months, we'll have more than 100 industries which are funded from DRDO for developing these technologies. A lot of startups and a lot of industries, MSMEs have uh, registered in this and various professors and retired scientists and the scientists from DRDO are hand-holding these industries for whatever the help they require. And uh, there is also to promote again uh, uh, the innovation and R&D culture in the students and the youngsters and the MSMEs. Every year, uh, there is a contest called Day to Dream. This is taken from Dr. Kalam's words. He used to say that dream, dream, dream. And uh, dream that you want to become a great man, you want to achieve something great. So taking that, we have put a Day to Dream contest where lots of individuals and startups are participating. And the best ideas are given uh, rewards and awards. And wherever they can be converted into a product, we are taking that in technology development funding and then trying to fund that uh, uh, particular in individual through a startup or through an incubation center in the university if he doesn't have anything. And trying to fund through the technology development fund also to encourage the youngsters. So coming to industries, 
In fact, when I joined DRDO and in uh, particularly in DRDO in Hyderabad, those days in the 80s, there were very few industries which were working. And most of the industries were built to print. That means you give the design, drawing, and they manufacture as well. Whereas today, the scenario has changed. Many industries have changed from built to print to built to specification. And they're actually going to build to requirements. Also. That is one sea change which is coming. And today, I can proudly say there are more than about close to 2,000 industries which are tier one and tier two industries, meaning we can develop the systems and subsystems. And there are parts developing industries are about 10,000. This is the number which is working in the country with uh, uh, DRDO and wherein lots of uh, uh, new mechanisms have been brought in to encourage the uh, uh, industries. It used to be earlier, DRDO would develop the technology and transfer the technology to the industry and uh, that becomes a production agency for the armed forces, so which is called technology transfers. There are more than about 1,300 technologies which have been transferred from DRU to industry today. And then the new, there is a new scheme which has been brought in to encourage the industries to be part and parcel of the development. And not only industry, earlier mostly we used to work with the defense public sector units. Today we are working with private sector in a big way. Even missile projects have been assigned to the private sector today. So this concept of DCPP, Development Come Production Partner, has been brought in, wherein the industry joins right at the beginning of the project and then works uh, along with the DRDO and learns the complete knowledge and so that next versions they themselves will be able to develop. This is another important program. As uh, Padmanavagaru mentioned, that uh, now we have opened it in a big way to the private sector. As I said, in Hyderabad, uh, where you are there, the missiles and bombs also have been given to private sector as DCPPs today. Over and above that, many things have been, the technology transfer fee has been waived off, the royalties have been waived off, and there is a concept called government-owned company operated for the huge facilities have been brought in where it is handed out to private people to work on these things. Test facilities have been opened, they have been put in the website and freely uh, people can access it. Uh, these test facilities. And so there are many, many things which have been brought in to support the industry in the country. And as I said, more than about 2,000 industries are working in this uh, scenario. Uh, just what I mentioned, nil TOT and minimum, uh, uh, the no royalty, only except it is going outside other than this, that will be having it. And even the patents what DRDO has got also have been uh, made open and the industry started using the patents also with the help of DRDO to uh, see that they will be able to use this and develop the products. So in the country today, with the help of the academia, with the research centers, we should be able to develop the advanced technologies. With the support of industry, not only just producing the systems with the quality, but at the same time, trying to have R&D in the niche areas, three elements the academia, the R&D organizations, and the industry together should be taking this country forward. I want to mention very clearly one thing here. Today, with the work which has gone for the decades, we are very confident and we are self-reliant in the areas of missiles, radars, sonars, cell ground warfare systems, AVAC systems, guns, aircrafts, and uh, armored vehicles, and communication systems, and all those areas, we are self-reliant but what is required? We have been importing a lot of systems. As we have been technology followers, meaning some advanced nation develops a technology, and we develop the technology after some time, after some years, and things like that. Now the time has come where we need to be contemporary in the technologies, or we should be leading the world, meaning we need to develop the first of its kind systems. So we need to work for the technologies which are going to come tomorrow. That is where the focus is now today. Having got self-reliant in these areas, saying that we don't need any imports in all these areas, what I've mentioned now, we need to work on the futuristic technologies along with the academic institutes and also with the industry and try to export it to the world. The only way I feel that the country can become far prosperous today is by technology. So we need to develop advanced technology systems and see that we are exporting to most of the countries in the world. 
that you can do it provided a product is technologically advanced, innovative, and lower cost, and having a good quality. So these are all the things which are required. And so we need to see that all these three elements with anchored with the DDRD and should be able to develop the system and try to export. So the export orders also started coming in uh, now. A lot of orders are coming. And I'm sure in the coming years, we should be able to develop. And uh, some of the things which are responsible for the um, import content in the armed forces today, uh, which probably around 40% or so indigenous content, maybe around 60% or whatever it is, the large platforms. We need to develop. I'm sure that with the large platforms like today being built in the country, the ships, the helicopters, the submarines, and the aircrafts, this content uh, of indigenous content in the armed forces in the coming years, I'm sure it will be going to 80%. And so the concentration is on to develop the critical, complex systems and large platforms. So this is where we are concentrating today and ensuring that industry is able to develop most of the current systems and technologies. And that's how the focus is. And I'm sure that in the coming years, India will be a leading exporter in the defense equipment. Thank you. Thank you very much. Jackie. Thank you very much, sir, for a wonderful lecture. Uh, <clears throat> uh, we will also request you if after the lecture, maybe in another seven days, if you can give us the text, we have the culture of uh, publishing the lectures so that it goes into wider circulation. So another 10, 15 days, if you can send us the textual version of this lecture, we will be very grateful. Few questions have already come in. So uh, is it okay if I read it out to you, sir? Yeah, yeah, please. Go yeah. ahead. So one of the questions that has come to me here is that uh, why has India been so successful in missile development than other systems? Any particular reasons? Uh, now, firstly, I want to say that it is not only missiles now. We are successful, as I said, in radars. We are successful in sonars. We are successful in torpedoes. We are successful in electronic warfare systems. We are successful in AVAC systems, and we are successful even in armored vehicles and guns also. But you are right that uh, the missiles have led. They were the first to come in. I think um, that uh, primarily because the first program which has been sanctioned, major program, is the Integrated Guided Missiles Development Program. And the leadership what Dr. Kalam gave is the one what actually made it march forward and ahead of others. Yeah. Uh, there is one question from Mr. Uttam Saikia. He says that even though light combat aircraft is one of the best aircrafts that is there in that class, but still we are using a general electric engine. Any idea when we will have our own Kaveri engine also mated to this aircraft? Uh, actually, a good question uh, what has been posed by him. It is unfortunate that Kaveri engine could not get into it. The Kaveri engine has been developed. As we know that the aircraft and the engine were simultaneously being developed, there have been uh, the gap between the aircraft and engine requirements are coming. So the engine what started getting developed and the aircraft requirements have diverged. And so the recovery system could not get into it and the requirement of the aircraft has gone high. So that is the basic point. Now then uh, the future uh, systems, future aircraft, we need to have our own uh, engine. We're working on that. I'm sure that in the coming uh, future versions of aircrafts, we should be able to develop our own engine for those requirements and should be able to meet. But then the covered engine is getting its uh, application in some other systems, which I won't be disclosing here today. But then after some time, we'll be coming to know that covered engine is also being utilized in other platforms. Uh, another question which has come from one of our colleagues is that Ordinance Factory Board has now been restructured and they're you know, divided into seven DPSUs. What impact do you think uh, it will have on you know, taking the DRDO technologies to the uh, armed forces? Basically, it has been brought in to bring in the efficiency and uh, bring in the better quality systems and trying to produce systems in a faster way. And I'm sure that uh, that will definitely happen as uh, corporatization definitely brings in more and more on accountability. And uh, so the system should change and more and more efficiency should be able to come in 
and so the DRDO technology based product should be coming more more and more faster. There is a question from Lieutenant Colonel Siddharth Mukherjee. Any update and uh, on the development of MIRVs on our ballistic missile defense capability? Um, I only say that the capability exists and um, uh, I will reserve the statement there. Sir, another question which has come is, India has lagged behind in development of drones and unmanned vehicles. Any special uh, program that DRDO is taking in uh, bridging the gap? Uh, yes, there have been a lag uh, in the UAV's development, but now I think we are catching up. As I said, uh, by next month, uh, Rustum 2, which is the medium altitude long endurance UAV, should be completing all its trials and meeting all the requirements and should be able to get into the armed forces later. Drones, I don't think we are uh, lagging behind. Drones, actually, the particular industry is doing extremely well. Startups are doing well. A lot of drones are being developed uh, for varieties of applications in the country. There are a um, large number of uh, 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 startups and industries which are working on the drone and drone-based technologies. They're working on themselves. They're working with uh, DRDO for various surveillance and uh, related applications and all that. And so drone is uh, doing well. And uh, the male and hail also, we should be able to catch up very soon. Yes, there was a lag. I agree with that, but not. Uh, it is no longer it will be so. Sir, so another question which has come to me is that more and more uh, private sector and MNCs are developing, uh, you know, starting their own companies in India. And uh, there is, uh, you know, uh, an, uh, always a tendency for them to take people from DRDO uh, to start with, some scientists from DRDO. Uh, any measures which DRDO is taking to retain specifically their key scientists? That, or do you think that this is a this is a correct assessment or no actually we are not finding many uh, scientists leaving the organization today that is very 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 less uh, percentage and most of them are out of personal reasons but then um, some numbers here and there uh, maybe their yeah, joining industry is also good and is again helping the indian industry only and we will be continuously having the new blood to work here also uh, but the number is very small. I don't think we need to be concerned and work for that particular uh, uh, things very specifically. Another question which has come is India has recently, uh, you know, imported the S-400 system, uh, S-400 missile system. Is there any program of DRDO to improve that system and then export it? Um, you know, the DRDO has its own program not working on S-400 and trying to import and you can't actually update a system, foreign system and try to export that system yourself. Whereas uh, you will be able to do your system and uh, India is good in surface to air missiles and then this long range system also will be developed. Uh, one question from uh, VS is that DRDO has stepped in to fight uh, aid fight against COVID last year. What steps are being taken to further this program in the current rise of COVID cases? As there was a pandemic and there was a national requirement, DRDO with uh, the capabilities, what it has in the different sector, which can be used for the pandemic situation. Lots of activities have been taken. The onboard oxygen generation system, which is in the fighter aircraft, the LCA, has been uh, converted to oxygen generation plants is one thing. Then a uh, lot of oxygen cylinders with the automatic control of oxygen and then what uh, we developed a 2dg medicine for some other purpose long back uh, we found that it has a lot of utility that also has been brought in and then uh, very quickly we have built in hospitals with our own innovation and knowledge and uh, other things what we have also a lot of other technologies as i rightly said about 75 technologies which have been given to about 120 25 industries have been developed now we have to wait and see we have only made the hospitals ready and seen that and all other equipment are also made ready the ventilators we have designed and developed that also have been made ready and this sort of a thing now how it turns based on that the requirements we should be seeing as such we don't see that uh, the uh, situation of the patient is not very very uh, serious hospitalization is still less is less yes. Sir, another question from Mr. Alok Singh, RR Cat is, uh, sir, is there any update on anti-drone system development? 
Anti-drone system is developed by DRDO. You have seen that it has been demonstrated. It has been put in Independence Day and Republic Day and various other things. And uh, armed forces have already ordered and uh, various security agencies are also ordering. The production has been given to, technology has been given to multiple industries. I think five or six industries have got the technology and that can be procured and then it can be installed anywhere. It has uh, a lot of modern features in that anti-drone technology which has been developed. Yeah, I think we, that's that's all the relevant questions we had. Thank you very much, sir. I, I think our chairman, uh, sir, you are on mute. I think he wants to ask a few. Sir, you are on mute. Yeah. Can I ask a question, please? Yes, sir, please. Right. Uh, the general comments one hears about uh, DRDO is, that your uh, scientists are very strong in technology demonstration, but not in technology management and delivery. That's one. A second point also that is said is that uh, your people are uh, uh, sort of very good in fabrication, testing, and integration, but uh, design capabilities, you are still lacking some. So these are the two comments. And uh, somebody has asked you about a question about some sort of a brain drain. Now there, what I heard is, that uh, yours is one of the best organizations for young scientists. They're, they're very keen to join you because of good facilities and uh, you know freedom of expression and uh, sort of freedom of action and all those things. Um, they, they do serve about three, four years, but then they seem to be going away because of the salaries and all that. Is that, uh, you said it's not there, but maybe not at the senior level, but people who have put in about three, four years, learned all the tricks, learned all the trade and then leaving that. Is, is that a problem? So these are the three questions, please. Uh, firstly, I'll go from the reverse order, the scientists leaving the organization. As I said, it is not a issue today at all. Okay. There are very few people, even at the junior level also. This yeah. was a problem in late 90s and early 2000s, uh, where a lot of people with the software boom, a lot of people have left DRDO at that time. But of, of late, uh, very, very less, very few. Okay, and good. And scientists also, and uh, you know, scientists, B, Cs, and all that. I don't find, uh, except very rare occasions out of uh, the family comes up and other things. Uh, otherwise, I don't see. That is not at all an issue for us today. Second thing is uh, the technology development. Yes, uh, the people, the scientists are strong, as the first question, what you have said. Yeah. And uh, technology management, you are uh, to some extent right, sir. See, basically, scientists are not uh, very good administrators and managers in a various levels. Some people will have their own uh, this thing, but we have built the systems of it. We have built the systems to see that, as I said, uh, these technology transfers are bringing industry right in the beginning of the project development, wherein you are able to work together, understand each other, the production, development cycles, and maintenance cycles. So you are able to understand, follow. The whole project management skills have been brought in. The scientists are being sent to IMs and other places to get the skill set uh, for the managers who are in the program directors, project directors, and directors and all that. Special drive is taken to see that the skills are brought in and things like that. The last question, I'm not very sure it is uh, uh, they are good in uh, uh, integration that and things like that and not design. Actually, this is actually contradictory to the first question. First question says the technology, they are very good and not very good in the management. So technology are very good, and that means you are very good in the designs also. also. Uh, actually, I say that the strength of DRDO is design. You may have some subparts, like uh, you said, uh, somebody asked me, Aero Engine, you are bringing, because all the technologies are not available, but still you can get some items some subsystems from outside, but you are still able to use them and design them and prove it. I can very confidently say that Today's whatever DRDO systems comes out, except in the case of aircraft, um, most of the systems are 95% of the systems, the indigenous content is more than 80%. Because we today still we don't have some of the electronic components and things like that in this country, uh, that uh, small percentage is left out. Otherwise, the indigenous content is high and the design IP lies with DRDO in everything. Uh, this is one uh, very, very confident answer I can say that. In, in fact, I said uh, most of the areas like missiles, radar, sonars, electronic warfare system, AVAC systems, guns, armors, and uh, aircrafts, and things like that is completely we are self reliant today. You will be able to uh, develop the state of the art system in these areas today. Right. Wonderful. 
Thank you. Thank you so much. Thank you. Sir, this, so there's a one last question which has come up. You mentioned there are five laboratories where the scientists average age is less than 35 years. What is the progress? How do they fare? One anonymous attendee is asking, what is the performance of that uh, of those five laboratories? Performance is uh, very good. And very they good. have taken up, as I said, uh, uh, the areas, most advanced areas, like I said, the quantum technology. We are the first people to develop uh, a quantum random number generator in the country, the St. Centers Laboratory. Similarly, quantum communication, they have first, uh, established between two laboratories at 12 kilometers away. And now in the lab, they have established for 100 kilometers. And similarly, drone-based many technologies have been developed by an asymmetric technology. And then there is a cognitive radio which has come from the cognitive laboratories also. So there are many things which are coming out of these young scientist laboratories which are the most advanced technologies-based uh, systems. Thank you. Thank you so much, sir. Uh, uh, now uh, I request our chairman uh, to say a few words and... Uh, well, I must uh, thank you, Dr. Satish Redigaru, uh, for a wonderful uh, sort of elaboration of uh, what is happening. Things have changed and uh, DRDO is, uh, takes a pride of place in the uh, system scientific establishment in the country. Especially, uh, we, we do acknowledge the uh, tremendous progress made uh, in the missiles and in your ASAT missile project, which is a matter of pride. And then you were... Uh, uh, Brahmos, uh, these things, and so many other things. It's uh, really good. And also in the uh, submarines, you know, the nuclear submarines and all that, uh, the systems. So thank you once again. And uh, uh, when I talked about uh, technology management and delivery, I also should have added technology marketing. So some of these areas, I think you should tap as our uh, resources also in the ASCII, you know, so we would be able to uh, sure. sort of contribute our best. So, uh, while thanking you, I would like to present to you a memento for this occasion. This is the national bird, you know, the peacock. Oh. It's beautifully oh. done in the, uh, this one, in the filigree work. Uh, I can't give it to you here, so I will see that it's delivered to you at your office, either in Hyderabad or in Delhi. Thank you very much. Thank you, sir. Thank you very much. Thank Bye. you very much. Thank you very much, sir. Thank you very much, sir. Thank you. Thank you. Jai Hind. Namaskar. Jai Hind. With this, we end the lecture. Please stay tuned in this space. On 24th of January, we will have Shri V. Srinivas, Secretary, Department of Administrative Reforms, who is going to deliver the next ASCII public lecture. Thank you very much, everybody. With this, we now close the session. Thank you.